Hey everyone, welcome back to the Board Game Spotlight. Today we're going to look at Skulk Hollow from Pencil First Games. It's for two players and it plays in about 30 to 40 minutes. So let's take it to the table and I'm going to tell you about it. So we've set up today, we have Grack. This is the Guardian player and they're going to play against the Fox and Heroes. Now this is a card driven combat asymmetric game. So each of the Guardians and the Fox and Hero play completely different, sometimes even wildly different. You really have to keep an eye on the abilities that the other player has available to them. But to do that, they have included this awesome player aid. So this tells you the objective for the Guardian and it lists all of the abilities they have available to them. The same is here for the Fox and Heroes. This goes to the Guardian player and it tells you the abilities they have available to them. Now at the beginning of the game, the Guardian is going to place their Giganta Meeple here in the lair, and the Fox and Hero is going to start with their leader, and this is the Sentinel. This is the Keep, and these are the Farms. Let's go ahead and talk about the Fox and Hero, and then we'll jump over to the Guardians. Alright, so the Fox and Hero, let's talk about them. Right up front, you're going to start with a leader and the Sentinel. Now, at the beginning of the game, you're going to choose between four different heroes. Now, each of these heroes has an asymmetric ability, and they also have different varying levels of health and power limits. Uh, we're gonna choose the Queen of Blessing to show off in this preview video. Additionally, they have listed out, these are all of the abilities available to them. They're going to start with a hand of five cards, and they're gonna get to play three actions on their turn. So this, again, it's a card-driven game. You're going to notice that there are multi-use cards. Some of the cards are, just have one symbol, others have two, and then we have units. It's imperative for the Fox and Hero player to get more units out on the board. So the first thing they can do on their mat, one of the first actions, is to summon. When you summon a new unit, you will find the meeple with the associated uh, icon here, and you're going to place it in either the keep or in one of the two farms. So you'll place it on the board and then you're going to notice that this rogue has the ability to leap or melee. Now each of the units are asymmetric. They all have different abilities that they can utilize. They also have different icons that activate them. So you cannot use a missile for the queen. You would not be able to use a missile on the rogue, but you could use a melee or a leap on any of these cards because you'll notice that symbol is on all three of those. So you really have to make sure that the cards you have available are going to activate the units you have on the board. You can also, like I said, you can leap, melee, missile, and prepare. Now prepare is the only ability that both players share. That is you can discard a card from your hand in order to draw two new cards. Now there's no hand limit in this game. If you exceed the listed number on your player board, you're just going to draw one card at the end of your turn. So we also have movement ranges here and we have gain power. Now when you gain power, if we were to play this card, we would gain two power cubes and put them in our pool. This is really important. At the end of our turn, we would get to distribute these power cubes out to any of our units we wanted to. Why is that important? because these power cubes are free actions. Outside of our normal three actions we can take, we can discard a power cube from a unit to activate it. That is really, really important when you're trying to take down the Guardian because the Guardian player is very strong. One thing I wanna note is a term called banding. When you have a unit in with your leader, uh, that is called banding, and essentially this leader is going to be invisible. So unless they defeat the unit occupying that, they will not be able to deal any damage to the leader. That is the guardian player. So however, if they were to get rid of the unit that was there, they could then deal damage to the leader. And that's really important uh, for the guardian player to try to separate any units from their leader because their leader is a very powerful unit for the fox and heroes. So again, you have your different abilities. Your melee is going to let you deal damage to the Guardian uh, if you are in that space on the board. And the way you get there is by taking the leap action. So if we occupied the same space as the Guardian and we leapt, 
we would get to start here at the bottom and then any subsequent leaping would allow us to move up. So we would go to the shoulder, then we would have a choice here to either go to the head or over to the arm, whichever dotted path you want to take. Now each of the units, again, we talked about them having a variety of different asymmetric abilities. So whenever you take an action that activates a unit, you just wanna make sure that you're ensuring that you're meeting the requirement, uh, that you're not breaking any rules and that you can actually do that action. Uh, the missile action is another ability that the Fox and Heroes can use. It's going to allow you to deal one damage to the Guardian on any location they choose. Now granted, you do have to make sure, especially with like archers, that you are meeting their requirement and for the Sentinel as well, because the Sentinel has the missile icon and your archers do as well. After you've taken your three actions for the turn, you're going to draw up to five cards for the next turn, and then you're going to pass to the next player. So those are the actions that the Fox and Heroes can take. Let's pop over to the Guardian and we'll see what they can do. So the Guardian player has a variety of different uh, actions available to them as well. They also have an objective. In this case, Grack wants to eliminate eight heroes. So when Grack eliminates eight heroes, if the Fox and heroes have not defeated him, Grack is going to win the game. So Grack's cards also are multi-use, but they're going to be a little different. The Guardian player is incentivized and moves rapidly. The Guardian player is going to be able to outmaneuver the Fox and hero. He's going to try to gain the upper hand with moving around the board and activating and utilizing the different actions that the Guardian player has available. I want to take a minute and just mention that you'll notice the board is not a typical representation of a board. It's actually laid out at a 45 degree angle. Players are actually going to play corner to corner. So your cards are going to represent that. So when you play a card as the Guardian, you're actually playing corner to corner. Uh, the same is true of the Fox and Hero player. So this card would allow them to move on a uh, horizontal axis there. So if we wanted to activate Crack, we could advance one space, and then he's gonna have one more action for the turn. So now that we've moved, we could use the Gaze ability and Gaze is going to deal one damage to any unit on a surrounding ground space that shares a side with Grack. So that is corners or sides. So we could deal a damage to this character or we could deal a damage to the Sentinel. Again, the leader cannot be damaged because there is a unit present with them, but that's what Gaze would allow us to do. Additionally, if we had all of these units in the middle and Grack had moved and we wanted to use the stomp action, we would actually get to disperse all of these units however we wanted to. We could send them to the four corners of the universe and they have been dispersed and now we can actually deal damage to the leader. Another thing we can do is to activate our throw card. If there was a player or a meeple on Grack, we could choose to use our throw and actually remove that meeple from Grack and throw it into any ground space on the board. Another ability you can use is the swing ability. Swing is going to allow you to deal damage to a unit that occupies the same ground space as Grack. We also, the last thing we have is mend. Mend is incredibly important for the Guardian player. There are very few cards in the deck that actually allow you to mend. What that does is if the Guardian player has dealt damage to any location on Grack, let's say they have taken away Grack's ability to swing or throw, we could use our mend ability and remove one of these damage and now we have unlocked this again. It's, it's no longer deactivated. We can use it this turn. Now remember, for Grack, you're only allowed two actions on your turn, so he's, he's quite limited. But again, he's extremely strong. So really what you're trying to do as the Grack player is move around the board as quickly as possible and just start dealing damage. Again, the win condition for Grack is that you defeat eight heroes. So if you take out their archers and their rogues, which have one damage apiece, you can really start to rack up the kill count, whereas the Sentinels, the Knight, and their leader is quite a bit harder to actually kill. 
So after Grack has taken their turn, it'll go right back over to the Fox and Heroes, and you're gonna go back and forth until a player has achieved victory. Again, the Fox and Heroes have either defeated Grack or Grack has defeated eight of the Fox and Heroes. Now, Skull Kahlo comes with a variety of other guardians. Uh, there's a lot of replayability here. We have Raptra. Raptra wants to defeat all of the heroes in Skull Kahlo except for the leader. And then Tanthos wants to get all of their root tokens onto the board, but there are some rules and stipulations behind how Tanthos can do that. Um, again, you'll notice that on these player boards, there are stars that indicate the difficulty of that guardian. So Grack here is a one star and Tanthos and Raptra are three stars. So you can just kind of, players can gauge how difficult it might be to either play against or with that specific guardian. Skull Kahlo is stunning on the table. It's absolutely gorgeous. Not only is it beautiful, but it is ferociously fun and it is engaging and the gameplay is back and forth. It's tight, it's very tense. Skull Hollow is the front runner for best two player game of 2019. So if you want to know more about Skull Hollow, if what you see has interested you, Take a look at the description below for a link to their Kickstarter campaign. This has been Derek with the Board Game Spotlight, and this has been your preview of Skull Callow.